Hello everyone and welcome to Chinatown Vancouver. I'm here with Julian Falk who is using his X-T4 and what, 16 to 55, Julian? 1655 F28 to shoot this video. And here we are looking at the brand new Fujifilm X-T5 and coupled with the new 30 millimeter F2.8. Now, the first time I saw the lens, I thought this is one of the ugliest uh, lenses that I've seen from Fujifilm, but ugly in a cool way because for instance, Julian thinks it actually looks not too bad. So a controversial design. I have the lens hood on here, makes it look a little less ugly. It's a quirky looking lens, but I think it's a great walk around lens. It has a 45 millimeter uh, field of view equivalent in full frame. And I shoot with Minolta X, um, MD and MC mount, and they have a famous 45 millimeter F2 pancake. So I'm used to this field of view. I think it's great. F2.8 is probably the one thing that people will be a little bit concerned about. Sure, it would have been better if it was an F2. My guess is optically at F2, it's going to be way too soft, especially if you're getting really close, uh, getting into that macro focusing mode. And as well, when you are at 2.8 and you're getting close to like uh, 1 to 2 and 1 to 1, the depth of field, you need to be about 5.6 at least anyways. And even then the depth of field is really shallow. So as a macro lens primarily, it makes sense that it's at F2.8. As a walk around street lens, you should be at around F to f8 anyway so in the end I think it's a great walk around lens and so let's walk through Chinatown Vancouver and we'll make our way down to Gastown maybe to Revolver Coffee and we'll do some street style photography oh and also we're at one of my favorite buildings here in Chinatown the Yifeng Toy Society and I think it's just kind of a cool looking building and I love taking photos in front as people walk past now it's not a toy society as in like they have toys that's what i thought as well it's a it's a chinese organization and usually they're playing uh, mahjong inside which is a really cool what maybe hopefully one day we can get invited maybe julian you can get us invited we'll just say julian toy that's your last name and we can get in there and uh, check out the uh the cool aunties and uncles playing mj but anyways one of my favorite buildings now let's get going I really like this 30 millimeter focal length. It's better than the 50. It's closer to what my eye sees or the way I want to see things. 40 is even better. So if this was a 27 mil macro, I think it'd be mm, chef's kiss. But 30 is good enough. You get a little bit more compression. So if you want to use it like a product photography, sort of a waist up portrait lens, you could pull that off as well. So you can use it like a, a 35. And you can use it like a 27 in the Fujifilm ecosystem. So you can use it as either a 40 or a 50. It's kind of in between. So it is a nice focal length. So again, going back to my Minolta 45 F2, I'm used to that, but not macro focus capabilities, which is awesome. All right, let's get rocking. Got the dog, the kid. Oh, look at that. Oh, that kid just looked towards us too. Perfect scene. The scene was perfect, but Ah, why can't we control everything as photographers? We could just control everything. The, the red pole, and I see Gordon coming. Oh, we'll get Gordon here. Gordon will pose for us. So we'll just wait here. Gordon, hey. how's it going? <laughs> oh, bread. <laughs> All right, that worked out. Again, this car should have been cooler. We need cooler cars, guys. They're so generic. This is a little bit um, more telephoto. You can get the worker in there a little bit nicer. She's in there working. And having this articulating screen is great. Yeah, she's, she's moved off. But anyways, yeah, this articulating screen is great. Not swinging out. When it swings out, the strap gets in the way. So being able to shoot down low like this, and then shoot up high like this. Yeah, I just like the way the light hits this corner here. And I've done lots of pictures here. Um, that's kind of the beauty of visiting the same spot throughout the year. You know where the sun is at what time of day. And here's a car here. Try not to get run over. But that's another reason why I like Chinatowns because vehicles move very slowly. And I can maneuver quickly between cars. See, as you can see, it's just a, it's a hot mess down here, but I like the hot mess. I like the chaos. Good to have you back. How, you, how, how are you feeling? Better. Better, and you have an assistant with you now. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Keep up the good work. Yeah, Harold was uh, 
was attacked a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago, and he's a, a regular in Chinatown. And that's another good reason why uh, it's good to shoot in the same area. I call it my route, is that you get to meet the locals and the people that live and work in certain communities, and you kind of become part of the community. So that actually helps me to take better photos. You know, you can catch people, they're relaxed around you, they're used to having you having a camera and taking photos of them and so you get more natural photos versus you look like an intruder, you look like an outsider in a community and every eye in the community is on you because you look out of place. I feel really at home here so that's another thing. I, I, my photos are better here not because of me but because of the ease and comfort because there's a vibe off of people you get and the vibe is good not because of me per se but because they're used to seeing me around I end up getting better photos so anyways let's keep let's keep on rocking the casbah while not getting hit I almost forgot that I have the X-T5 with me so focused on the 30mm f2.8 but it makes sense you know the body is in the old film days it was just basically a light tight box right but the X-T5 is very natural. To me, it's basically what the X-T3 should have always been. The X-H1 had IBIS, but it had the older sensor and processor. The X-T3 comes out with the new sensor and processor, but no IBIS. And then the X-T4 comes out and it has a fully articulating screen. So I think a lot of us photographers that like love the X-T series for like serious shooting, that love the SLR ergonomics and shooting style, who wanted IBIS but wanted like a normal three-way articulating screen and instead Fujifilm comes out with the X-T4 and makes it a flagship and so Julian is using the X-T4 now but for, for, for stills photographers we don't want the fully articulating screen so it's so natural I almost forgot talking about it but I'm excited to shoot with this and having 40 megapixels is sort of overkill for a lot of people but it's still fun having so let's keep on shooting. All right, the light over there is pretty cool. I wish the, the angle is not bad. Is that the wrong spot? The pole is only lit at the top there. But we'll just see if I can pull something off. Car stopped here. Let me get something here. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. Keep on going. Oh, it would have been perfect. You have anti over there. Look, two antis with red jackets. Oh man, and they're going the opposite direction. That would have been so perfect. Ah! I moved too quick. You got it? Yeah, you got it. I, I sure didn't. Man alive. I was too impatient. I should have, I usually stand on that corner. I usually stand there for about um, maybe five minutes minimum just to see what happens, but as you saw previously as I was walking past, a guy was, he noticed me and he wouldn't stop looking. So I kind of moved on because I don't want him to feel uncomfortable. So anyways, all right, before we keep on going. And with this, ah, this is not too bad, you know, with the 30, it frames those two pretty good. I think probably better to, oh, you know what? I was stuck on 1600 for the longest time. It's a little bit too fast. Right around here is just right. It's just a matter of having someone interesting walking in between the two or coming towards me. But no, no, no. The problem is cars think you're crossing. All right, we'll see what happens here. Eh. No, it's shadowed. That's the problem. Yeah, probably best to cross the street here and see if it can get any action anywhere else. Yeah, see right here is not too bad. But see, it's a matter of not getting killed as you stand in the middle of the street here. So the problem with shooting in the winter as well is because the angle of the sun is so low in this part of the world, um, it feels like kind of like an hour before sunset the entire day. The sun along the southern uh, horizon here is just very low, so it's very shadowy. In the summer, the light's up way up high, so you get nice light throughout the day, but you can see we're in the shadow. So I'm looking for pockets of, if you look back over here, there's a nice little pocket of light over there. And so see how that's nice, but it's not shining on anything that interesting to me. So it's a mixture of like finding interesting backdrops with interesting light. And usually in the corners, it opens up a little bit. So let's just check out another one of my favorite corners. And Chinatown's cool because 
One of the things they did, this goes way back, Expo 86, they wanted to really market Chinatown. And the way they did it was to color the, all the poles red. So you know the boundaries of Chinatown, where whenever there's a red pole, you're in Vancouver Chinatown. So that's kind of a, a trick. As soon as you see that the poles aren't red, then you're not officially in Chinatown. So when you go to these corners, as you can see, they're just, they punch, especially when you're shooting classic neg, the reds punch, it almost becomes kind of orange. And so it's an unnatural kind of a look, but you know, when you shoot film, which is what uh, classic neg is kind of imitating, that's what happens anyways, right? You get these weird unnatural colors. So um, this is actually a really good angle. This is a matter of just getting the right person walking in the middle of it. So we'll see, maybe I'll even get uh, Julian to kind of stand in the spot where I want someone to be so that it has some kind of a dynamic. But yeah, this is a really cool corner here. So Julian, if you kind of stand right there, yeah. And maybe move a little bit to your, uh, to your left. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So I'll just take a photo here, just so you understand with my framing here. Actually, you have a pole going up your head. So maybe I'll even, no, no, I'll move. And you just move towards me, look towards me. Yeah, more, more, maybe turn your body a little bit this way. Yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah, it looks pretty cool like this. Now I'm getting people, see now you're in my way. That guy was so cool, you, you shouldn't have been in there. What are you doing standing there? So yeah, so as you can see, the light opens up in the intersections. So you get some really cool um, angles. And again, with the red poles, great for symmetry. Uh, again, it's a, kind of a cool focal length for street photography. It's, um, yeah, I really like it. It's really cool. The focus is fast, very sticky. You could see the, uh, the subject detect working. I, I'm, there's times where it, it, we did before, it, it took a fire hydrant and it looked at the two little protrusions and it thought they were eyes, I think. And because this is on face detect. So sometimes it can make a mistake, but I think in general, um, it's pretty good. It's much stickier than the X-T4 for sure. But now I just, no one's coming here. Let's, I hope this couple turns right. So let's just see what happens. I have a feeling they're not going to turn right because turning right goes into one of the nastiest parts of Vancouver. And they look like tourists maybe, so maybe they won't turn right, but let's see, see what happens here. We'll just see what happens and... No, they're looking and they, they're, now they're just crossing the street. Yeah, it's not gonna work. But I'm gonna maybe back off here. Back off a little bit. Yeah. Maybe go F8. Still got the corner, but no one's looking at me. That's the problem. I'm gonna be standing in a way where people are looking this way. And again, I could stand here for, you know, half an hour and probably get the shot I want. Exactly the way I'm framing it, standing here. I have the brick wall to the right. I have these poles here. I could probably get the perfect shot, but I have to really sit here and wait. And I don't really know if I have the patience to do so. So let's go and check out another place here. Maybe we'll test the macro capabilities of this uh, 30 F2.8. Are you in a car? Can you hear me? No, 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 I'm, I'm, it's weird. I'm right in front of your shop. I have a film crew with me. Say, say hi to Julian. Hey, Julian. We work together sometimes. Still, I'm gonna see how close, Julian, get this of how close I can get to him yeah. with the macro. Move your chest a little bit closer to me. You don't have to lean in, no, just, can, you, can you sit closer without, or yeah, there you go, stand. Okay, ready? So let's just, okay, so here, I'm here. And it's the macro, it's one to one, so you probably get to go like this. Crazy. So if you need to do close product photography, this lens is great. Actually, there you go. This is probably a better way of testing this. Yeah. 
this is this is like this is like Sauron's ring here. You can see like this text on the edge. All right, guys. So we are now finished here at Revolver in Gastown. Thank you, Julian, for shooting video. My pleasure. Um, so you spent more time watching me shooting this. Yep. And as a hybrid shooter, what how what do you think about the XT5? Definitely not tailored for videography. Um, I can see why this camera exists. It's you know trying to give what photographers want. Um, I think the first big thing is definitely the screen. Um, I think for video shooters, you could get away with this type of three-way tilt screen. Crop that you get from 4K is going to be a big issue. 1.23 times, yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I think that's, um, you know, I think the X-T4 does have an upper hand with being a hybrid camera. Um, so for myself, I think the X-H2S is going to be a better hybrid camera. Um, but if you're more of a photographer and you do video a little bit, I think this would be still an option. Um, but I also see like the X-T4 is still a great option for, for hybrid shooters. Yeah, because there's no crop in your 4K. Yeah. There's it's better rolling shutter because it's dealing with a 40 megapixel sensor and it's trying to down render, right? Yeah, so in a way, having the 40 megapixel is actually a downside for video because it, yes. it increases the throughput and they have to either pixel bin or linescape or something to try to resolve that. And as well, it's two SDX yeah, cards versus uh, the C CFast Express, right? So yeah. it's, it's, it seems like it has to fight to give you decent video. Well, the X-T4, at the time, it was a flagship camera. It was meant to do both. Yeah, and for me, as mostly as a, as a stills photographer, having this articulating screen, um, I've talked about this a lot. I, I'm a strap shooter, so I have this around my neck, and having this thing swing out sideways, the strap gets in the way. And so if you're usually a type of shooter where you have this, like you either have a wrist strap or you don't like using any straps, then having a fully articulating screen, even being able to close it. So my brother loves the fully articulating screen because he can hide the screen because he's like 90% EVF shooter. So it's not like every stills photographer will like this, but for someone like me, I like to shoot down low. I like to shoot up high as you saw in some of the videos that we're shooting. This is a sort of, a, and even shooting vertical and being able to go like this. Yeah, um, yeah I think this uh, shouldn't be controversial for sales photographers. I think if you know you want this, you want this. To me, this is everything the X-T3 should have been. I think we talked about this a little bit. X-T4 is still a great camera if you do both steals and video, but you do get 40 megapixels for this, but you do have to watch out for rolling shutter, even for stills photographers. Because if you're doing electronic shutter and you're doing sports or anything moving fast, you're not gonna get 40 megapixels without that rolling shutter. So you need to find a way of defeating that rolling shutter with either ND filters, and you have to stay underneath one eight thousandth of a second or lower, or else you're gonna get that jello effect in your stills. And so that's my, and also the 30, let's talk about the lens. Yeah. What do you think about this 30 mil lens? Yeah, so I played with it a bit. Uh, there's some footage that we, we filmed at uh, the shop Vancouver. Um, and I got to do some stills with it as well. And I think the, the versatility of this lens is really a strong point. You can shoot all day, do street photography, do portraits even. Uh, cars, no, coming this way. Um, and you can just keep going closer and closer and closer. I think that's, you know, basically it's a versatile lens that almost has no close focusing limitation. Um, I think maybe the only reason why I wouldn't go for this lens is because the 30 millimeter uh, focal distance doesn't it's punch weird. in enough. It's weird for you, right? For macro, because you get so close that you're actually blocking away almost all of your light. So you either have to light the object. If it's like a, a bug, you probably will freak it out by the time you get close enough. Um, and so that's probably the only reason why I like the more, um, you know, 90 mil kind of 100 mil macro focal length. That's that's my opinion. Which, which you would get with the 60. The 60 macro is like a 90 mil, yeah. and then the 80 mil is like a 120. So you got nice distance between you and your subject. I, I'm the same. Like I, I like this as a 30 mil lens, like a 45 mil equivalent, and use it like a street photography lens. I don't care about the f 2.8 that much because. Uh, I'm at f4 to 5.6 on the street anyways. And just basically, yeah, there is no minimum focus because I mean, you're not street photography this close and yet this is how close you can get. So pretty much as long as the field of view is right for you, pretty much there is no minimum focus distance. Yeah. For street photography, if this is the focal length that you like shooting with, I think this is a great street photography lens. Other than I, I really feel this is an ugly looking lens and I'm- It's not the prettiest. It's not the prettiest. I mean, the front looks weird. Yeah. Um, the design is kind of weird. But, and that's and like the aperture the, ring is a bit looser than we'd like. Yes, and th this is a pre-production, so we don't know if this will be tighter. I'm pretty excited about this lens, but uh, not as a macro lens, like you said. I think it's too close to be a macro. If this is a, 
a one to two macro, meaning like instead of being this close, you're only this close, I would have been just as happy. And if they could have then made this lens look a little bit more compact and maybe a little bit brighter. And also I think you mentioned as well, it, with this size and the design, they could have put OIS in this if they wanted to. Yeah, I think for a macro lens, uh, especially because we both are X-Pro3 shooters, we don't have IBIS a lot of the times. And you know, unless you have a tripod and you're really you know, locked off, having OIS would have been a really big feature in this lens and it's it's too bad it's not in it. So then you, this could be a standard 30 mil prime, which Fujifilm's primes in the standard range, none of them have OIS. I think the 80 mil has OIS and I'm just thinking none of the wide angle primes have it. No, just in the zooms and then as you go more super telephoto or telephoto, you start getting it. But in this range, this had OIS. I think a lot of people would use this as a standard lens just because you can hand hold like maybe like an eighth of a second at night and get those shots. With, and then on a body like an X-T30, X-Pro3, or an X-E4, and not have to worry about stabilization. Yeah, and I think this lens, as you said, like aesthetically, I think it looks better on the more rangefinder style bodies anyway. Think? I think, I think uh, yeah, uh, there's a shot I have of the uh, X-Pro3 with it. I think it looks better. It kind of reminds me of the Fujicrons. Oh, yeah, it does. Like the 50, it actually looks like the 50. It looks like the 50, yeah. I also thought the 50 was one of the ugliest of the Fujicrons. One but of my favorites. Is it really? Yeah. In terms of looks or even, no, not Both. looks. Oh, yeah. really? I like okay. the look. All right. Yeah. But uh, thank you so much, Julian, for helping me shoot today. My pleasure. And I'm going to continue to do more tests on this. This is just sort of like my first impressions. Thanks for joining me. My pleasure. And uh, let's uh, keep on. You don't have a camera. You can click, click. Nope. All right. It's so right there. <laughs> it's right there. All right. So thanks for watching and happy shooting. Click, click, click.